Hey guys, Big Square Road River.com. We are on with Jenny Moonstone on the um for the post fake inauguration <laughs> discussion. Who knows what's going on? Jenny knows, of course. So I want to get into I let's just I don't have any agenda. Let's free for all. And what's your take on what's happened, what's happening, and what's going to happen? Okay. So I want everybody to know the night before the inauguration, I got approximately 47 to 49 minutes of sleep. That was it. I got no sleep. Um, I was pacing and I did several readings and I'd like to share what my uh, pre-inauguration reading was. And now that that day has come and gone, you know, it's interesting to look at the cards in retrospect mm-hmm. and and try to make some things, things just make sense with time. So I wanted to know what was going to be presented to us. And I Bix, I know I said for people to prepare themselves um, to be presented with this fake inauguration. Mm-hmm. Okay. I know that I said that. So my community is having a very difficult time right now. And a lot of people are falling on their swords um, because a lot of people were under the impression that the inauguration was not going to go through. They they weren't going to go through with it. But I did specify that the fake news media and the powers that be were very much going to present the, you know, the broadcasting of and the filming of this inaugural event, okay? I didn't watch it. I've I've only seen a, a couple, like, clips here and there. I have no interest in watching a satanic ritual. Um, you know, it just doesn't, it doesn't excite me in any way. But, you know, what was presented, what we were going to be shown was going to be the four of wands and the ten of wands, okay? Which it has a very... Uh, you know, sort of fodder and decoration kind of effect to it. It looked like a set, right? Like a movie set. Mm -hmm. And everybody used, it was in costume. And even the way the colors were coordinated was very, you know, strategic. We know that these are their language, this is their language, it's color, color signaling, uh, symbolism, what have you. Now, what was interesting was when I tried to draw the contrast between what was being presented and what was actually going on behind the scenes. Now, that set of cards looked very different. I pulled the Nine of Swords and the Justice card. Now, what that combination um, immediately felt to me was, oh God, somebody is having a very difficult time right now with actual genuine Uh, legal issues so that it was presented as this big almost Shakespearean type of oh you know uh, production but behind the scenes people were crap in their pants Um, and there was a lot of uh, there were a lot of difficulties on both sides behind the scenes but the justice card upright you know this is the heart chakra so that has everything to do with the truth not the perceived truth not what's commonly accepted but the truth was causing people a great deal of psychological torment, okay? Um, now, it happened, okay? It, it freaking happened. A lot of people have been plummeted into a very dark space right now. And what I would tell everybody to do um, is to allow yourself to feel that. Um, I believe that this is part of the process uh, the country and individuals are experiencing, it's, it's a near-death experience. Uh, that's, that's my take on what is going on right now, is that this is a near-death experience. And if you speak to people that have had near-death experiences, they'll tell you that it is life-changing. <laughs> it, you, know, you can't go back to that, uh, the place you were before that experience. And so in line with that, this has certainly changed people um, and it has changed um, it, some people would argue that that now our course has changed I disagree I think that this was always part of it mm-hmm. um, a lot of people would argue that a lot of people would argue that something happened uh, something went wrong and that you know this ended up happening against 
you know, the original plan. I'm not sure where I stand with that just yet. Um, I really, I've been moving. Um, I'm staggering homes right now. I'm in one place trying to get into an, uh, another place. So all day yesterday, I have like, I have service. I don't have service. I'm like looking at my phone, but I'm holding a, a mattress. You know what I mean? And I'm <laughs> like, um, you know, but then everything did settle down and I, I sat with it last night and I'm not going to lie. I had my emotional moment too. The word of the day was visceral because to witness it was a visceral experience. Um, this otherwise, you know, sacred position, you know, the commander in chief of, of our country to see and to know just, you know, how dark these people truly are. And then to see them make a mockery of, of an otherwise sacred position was a visceral experience. And even someone, I mean, I'm, I'm no big deal, but I was going to say even the, the toughest people of people um, have been really brought to their knees emotionally by this. And so I want to acknowledge everybody and give you, allow you guys to give yourselves permission to cry about it if you have to, and then get back in the game because this is far from over. So can you, what are you, what are your thoughts, Bix? I've been dying to talk to you. That That is, I mean, I, I too was like, you know, I was hoping something would happen as in, you know, we turn the guns on them and arrest them right there on national television. Right there. And then afterwards, I'm like, it was like I'm getting texts from people, oh, nothing happened, nothing happened. And, and, you know, I started, I was down a little bit and then I started thinking and, and Cliff had helped me, um, he's seeing all these strange energies from space coming in behind the planet, just absolutely bombarding us right now. And he's like, you got to get your head right. You control your mind, your thoughts, and your feelings. We're, we're moving into a different space again. And there's going to be a lot of this going forward. You got to sit down, take a breath, stand back and look at where we are. If you have to adjust what your strategy is, do it. Um, but give yourself that time and space. Don't get bogged down in the in all the theories and details. Mm -hmm. And whatever happens, happens. I still believe absolutely. I think we are under military control right now. As a matter of fact, one of the little things that many people missed was the last line of Biden's acceptance speech. Every single president who's ever accepted ends it with, um, and may God bless America or and may God bless the United States of America. And I went back to all the televised ones. Every single one was like that. Let me read you exactly what he said. May God bless America. And may God protect our troops. Thank you, America. Hmm. Really bizarre. He, he's That's never said a thing about troops in his life. <laughs> Right. Like, what are you talking about the troops? But what troops? Whose troops? Your well, exactly. troops? <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, he would be in on whatever's going on, you know, right. whether or not he, he's not in the dark on this. He, he right. may be clueless, but his, he had a, a job to do, I think. And mm -hmm. still, and, and I agree with you, we have to we have to teach the population how bad socialism is. We have to teach the population how bad these people are, too. And when you think about it, I had a dream last night it, and it was Trump saying an eye for an eye. He yeah. said this in, in interviews long ago. He, he'll take his enemies and he'll say, hey, I'll give them a chance to go after me and then I'll hit them harder. An eye for an eye. And I'm like, there's so many people in position of power now within the, the, well, whether it's real power or fake power, they believe they're in power in the new administration. Um, they're going to be thrown things they cannot handle, just like Trump was. Trump was just brilliant at at dealing with it all. Yeah. You know, can you imagine Biden going into a, a press conference and dealing with open questions from people? No. I mean, the first right. thing about his son, he would freak out right. it, or in all that stuff. So I do believe we have to go through this. Also, I also know this is I'm in the knowing realm now that Trump does not want the financial system to be destroyed on his watch. Right. His watch theoretically is not there right now and 
Right. I, I believe it'll start up in March again type of thing. But in the meanwhile, the, the financial system has been ready to blow for 110 years. Right. And it could happen at a blink of an eye at any moment. It is so fragile. I think he wants it to be destroyed while the socialists are in charge. Mm-hmm. So that means, yeah, that's that's kind of my take. And then there was one more thing. Um, I I'm kind of reveling in the fact watching the Democrats flounder. I mean, you got Antifa going off already, and all the all the leftists are saying, "Hey, Biden's not including us in all these pre meetings. What's going on?" They're already infighting. And it's going to be really interesting to watch how fast the whole thing crumbles underneath them. That's, you know, I think that this stage that we're in right now was always going to be uh, that this gap. It's like a, it's a gap. Um, we could call it the darkness, you know, this period of the 10 um, days of darkness, uncertainty. Right? 10 days of darkness. I've heard 10 days of darkness, three days of darkness. Um, At this point, I'm going to equate darkness no longer entirely with the grid or communications going down, but also just a um, a psychological darkness. A lot of people are on very shaky ground right now, um, and they're not okay because they know the gravity of, of these be, beings that and what they intend to do if, if they could. And so the severity of that uh, does have to be felt. It has to be touched. We have to get sucked down that far. And I think, you know, we've talked about this before, but I do believe that that's how people learn because it's like trauma has this profound, it's so unfortunate. And I hope we can transcend this soon. Hopefully this is the last time. Um, But, you know, trauma and in this case, you know, living through it, maybe it's how people learn the contrast between how good we, you know, things could have been and what true darkness really looks like and feels like. People need the contrast because it wasn't working before. you know, the, I, th- I think that, and I just pulled some cards here. I love, I, I kind of love it too. I-, I got a good laugh out of Antifa, like wrecking buildings. Like it's their own, it's, it's what happens. It's the Ouroboros, the snake eating its own tail. And, and that's because darkness in comparison to the light, it has an alienating quality about it. It doesn't have a way out because that's the light's job. And so these people are going to confine themselves, confine themselves, confine themselves, smaller and smaller and smaller. And they're kind of just going to, you know, show us how bad things can really be. But, you know, I I was trying to say earlier this gap what's required is a sacrifice and the sacrifice is that we all choose something we make decisions on behalf of a future that we want not necessarily a future that we can see or even a future that is currently evident because if you were to just look around right now and see what is evident visibly evident we are up shit's creek but this gap this darkness, this bridge, I think what the soul, uh, the soul's evolution uh, requires at this point, and I don't love the word faith because I feel like that's disempowering a little bit. It takes it from off of you. But I think that what is required is, you know, strength, courage, bravery, and, and a little bit of faith, <clears throat> trust, trust in the divine that the light exists and also has a say in all of this. It's too easy to look around and say, well, there is no, there is no help. There is no God. There is no, there must not be another side to this, but you know, the principles, you know, some basic principles tell us that there is another side. There must be the light. There must be good forces working. And there are, this was the hard part. Excuse me. I'm, I got sick. (coughs) 
<clears throat> two days before inauguration, <laughs> fever, chills, oh. all the thing, all of it. <laughs> La Rona, right? No, no. Um, I don't think it's the Corona. I'm already on the mend. But I, I do want to say, though, that this is how it goes. It It's in waves. So it was, you know, it was D.C., you know, the violence at the Capitol, come home, rally, 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 get sick, move, Biden inauguration. And, and so, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And everywhere I look, people are getting hit, 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 hit. But what do we know about these times? You know, it's a cluster F, it's a cluster storm of bad stuff. And then like a flash of light, there's some kind of clarity. This is, it's physics, Bix. We're I, not making this stuff up. We get to live through it. And I, one of the things I was talking about this morning was one of my revelations was, you know, this, we pick this, this path and this journey at this time to learn certain things. I have learned a ton in the last 24 hours about, you know, controlling your emotions even and, yeah. and understanding that there's other things affecting our minds and our bodies from space, from spirit. It's not just what's here on the planet. We're getting bombarded. This, this is the big show. This is the final act that we came down here for. And you got to look at it as something beautiful and exciting and a, a, a perfect place to learn whatever you came here to learn. You can choose that. And that's what I tell people is that you can choose. And I think in, cause he, Trump had several addresses to the public before he made his, his exit. But one of, I think it was his fair, what they labeled the farewell speech. Uh, it was about, you know, the future of this country beats in the hearts of, of the people that, that want it, or, you know, something to that effect. And that really, resonated and then he emphasized choice i even i i've heard his tone change and the way he looked at the camera you know he's a very smart man and he knows who he's talking to i think he knows who he's addressing mm -hmm. um when he talks to, to those of us that are really really listening and so a lot of it is about what you choose to do now you know um, if you choose to see this as the end, which I'm seeing a lot of people falling off, like, really? oh my gosh, I mean, people in my community is I'm a huge advocate of, of Q um, and the plan to save the world. And because th it didn't go down the way people really wanted it to, they're just, you know, oh, it was all of this. It was all of that. It wasn't, you know, this is the hard part, you guys, you're going to give up that easily. Um, and I'm kind of past beating people up for it because it has been really difficult. And I cried my tears too, but I'm in no way giving up, you know, that's a choice. And I choose to stay in the fight um, for as long as possible. So let's see here. I'm just going to pull a card to see where this is going to go. There's so much information out there, you guys. I would encourage everybody to maybe take a little bit of a social media break. Yeah. Take a break. Um, I did, you know, last night. Ooh, I wanted to say, I'll, I'll say it in a second. Okay, so I said, how far, and the question that I kept getting was how far do we have to fall? And, I, and that might seem, again, a very visceral, it's like my, it's like the word of the week. <laughs> um, how far do we have to fall collectively, um, you know, before this is just brought to the forefront of the collective? And I have the King of Wands, okay? Everyone, everybody just, that's Ned Stark, by the way. So um, <laughs> everybody knows what happened to good old Ned Stark. <laughs> so, you know, I'm feeling like, oh, and then what happens afterwards is the Ace of Wands, okay? The Ace, Ace is the, this is the light. This is that flash of, of, oh, you know what I mean? It's that light bulb moment that we will inevitably come to. I don't think we're, we're not done. 
this doesn't, we're not in for, you know, our death warrants have not been signed. This isn't over. We really are just beginning. Um, my feeling on this, um, I think we have to witness um, some very bright and, and other, otherwise seemingly very powerful structures and people, people and structures, we have to see them crumble. And they, they may have been um, put up on such a pedestal, doesn't matter by which side, but we do have to see them come down. This could be Trump. This could be, you know, it could be, you know, remove our player, remove our Captain America, strip us of our sense of safety and cover. Um, you know, but then I think that that's just me adding my bit to it. But if we want to talk about traditionally what this card is, this is a very, this is an almighty um, structure, an almighty archetype here. Um, I think that we need to see, people need to feel what it's really like um, to kind of like flip this on its head a little bit, right? Um, one of the problems I'm seeing is that people believe that they want less overreach, but they wouldn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is I think that people, I'm getting, I'm getting that people are going to have to manifest what it's like to have to do it for on your own. Like, oh, we think we have really good ideas. Okay, try them. Do that. Do you know what I mean? Go ahead, try that. And, and see see how that goes. And when that fails, whatever that may be, um, I think at that point, you know, people are just inevitably going to be led in the direction of the truth. Because the truth is glowing. The truth is right there. It's like the elephant in the room. I shouldn't use elephants and donkeys like ever again, but <laughs> it's, um, it, you know, the truth is staring everybody in the face, but there's a false truth. And the false truth was like this glass that can't be shattered, like bulletproof glass. I think people need to see that glass completely fall apart. This will be very painful. We're in for a painful process. And I want everybody to prepare themselves um, to have to deal with other people's pain, how to compartmentalize your own pain, how to deal with it. Um, but I'm really encouraged by this. Um, and like I said, I just want to tell people, I did have my moment, okay? I'm a sensitive person. I'm not a soft person. I am a sensitive person. There's a difference. <laughs> um, but I felt, I felt like, okay, this was that period of, okay, what do we know? What is it that we know to be true? And then compare that to everything that we were told, compare that to what we hope for and reassess, recalibrate and be very realistic. Um, reality is going to test us. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I'm, I wanted to say, just to kind of illustrate how real things are, my good friend, one of my dearest friends, I told you he's a retired Marine Corps intelligence officer and he has a private security company. He was contracted to work security at the rally. So he calls me last night. I just finished dinner. I was with my boyfriend and my friend calls me and he's like, are you sitting down? I was like, yeah, what happened? Just give it to me. Don't do that sitting down <laughs> shit with me. Are you kidding? You know, like, let me have it. It's been a day. So he said, all right, you know, two federal agents just came to my house you know, we, they came, he's like, I let them in. I'm, you know, I told them everything. He said they had all of my, you know, all of our Facebook activity um, as he went to the Capitol that day. Bix, I didn't go to the Capitol and I wanted to, but it didn't work out for reasons that we talked about in the last episode or the last reading. And I'm like, oh my God, if I had had it my way, I would have gone to the Capitol. And if, to, if federal agents showed up to my home, I don't know how I would do. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would probably just be like, you can't come in here. I'm not letting you in here, but they'll try to scare you, right? You know, so 
I'm just so grateful that I didn't go. But, you know, my point is within hours of this fake inauguration, they feel such a sense of uh, power. They're, they feel like they're wielding so much power um, that they're just going around and um, they're starting to bully people and intimidate people. So that's where we're at. And um, I do want people to prepare themselves to have to choose truth over a false reality that will be shoved very aggressively in your face. And that's going to require strength. On, on the, when, when you said something, a big structure has to fall. To me, yeah. to me, mm. that's that's the banking mm -hmm. whole infrastructure. I mean, it is it's so it's built on such false premises that mm -hmm. I mean, I I don't think there's any way forward. And I even when Trump was rigging all the markets, just like everybody else before him, I was always we cannot move forward with the foundation built on the quicksand that we currently have. And I don't see any other way forward than the complete destruction of our old monetary system and the rebuilding of something new. That was always what the Road to Ruta comic book said back from you know 30, 40 years ago. And I to me that that is the most that's the sword or the wand that was it a wand or a sword that you saw in the future. I, I see the future as a beautiful, amazing thing. Yeah. And but it can't be if we have a monetary system, a debt based monetary system based on lies and cheating and, and stealing. You know, uh, I, I hadn't thought of it. This is one of the many reasons I value our our connection so deeply is that I hadn't thought of the the, the idea that Trump didn't want the system, the financial system to completely crash on his watch. This is something that he has such a deep, uh, you know, value for and, and understanding of that, that it would be, this was not a good look for him. Okay. Um, so I wanted to clarify this King of Wands structure, which is this larger than life, you know, seemingly untouchable, you know, a King of Wands is very phallic. This is, you know, it's, it's, I'm the man, right? I'm the guy in charge. Um, oh, 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 you know, look out. So I wanted to clarify that and see what this was. I mean, that's the banking system. They're a bunch of bullies. They're, you know what I mean? And it's, it's pre, it's uh, mostly men. Okay. I'm sure there are women in finance. Like the, the women have a whole other realm and they're a whole sketchy covenant over there that one day we'll get to. Um, but for right now, you know, to clarify our king here, I have the emperor, which again is going to be traditional structures, seemingly untouchable. You know, it's, it's the whole deal. And we have the 10 of wands again, so much wand energy. Um, there is so much fighting going on right now. <laughs> there is like behind the scenes, this is just it's so much people are literally removing themselves you know shuffling themselves off world we're talking like people we are not even hearing about are exiting stage left because they they cannot be part of this they they, they can't stick around um i do feel like what we will see all right, that between the emperor and this 10 of wands energy, I just want everyone to see, hopefully the glare is not too bad. Oh, it's good. Um, but he takes on far too much weight. There is far too much um, spread too thin and too much pressure that the emperor can't hold it. This structure can't, you know, it looks very, you know, and I don't know to whom Joe Biden looks impenetrable to, but I'm sure that there are people that see his whole team as the savior, kind of the way, you know, a lot of people view Trump as, you know, the savior, um, which I never saw him as the savior. I, I just saw him as like the man, like he's just a badass boss type of person. But um, it does appear that it this buckles under the weight of too much. It spread itself out too thin. 
Um, and then we go to the page of coins energy. You see he's getting thrown a little satchel mm -hmm. there of gold, uh, Lannister, you know, anybody, Game of Thrones. But um, this is, you know, this is that kind of, let's get back to the beginning. Let's get back to something that we're going to have to do something different. So there is, um, there is this like kind of yucky thing I'm getting where we'll feel it as almost like they'll, they're going to, there's like a big insult here that's coming up. Um, and it feels like some kind of an announcement. It could have to do with like the stimulus checks or whatever. Um, but my feeling is that things are going to get more, um, I want to use the word gross because it's like their actions and their um, presentation is going to be so like, like we are being treated like we're fourth graders or fifth graders and people are going to become repulsed by this and the demands will be great. There will be a huge, there will just be a lot of weight put on it. And when I look at all of this and then I compare this to, you know, other things I'm hearing and then also your insight, it, it does feel to me that maybe it ha we had to walk this road mm -hmm. um, because if Trump had just been very, you know, nicely inaugurated on that day, kind of there was a bit of a switcheroo, um, we, you know, he would have still been public enemy number one, mm -hmm. no matter what. And it would have been this huge thing. Oh, this, this, and that. No, I, you know, I think it has to be this way. I do. And that's not to say it's going to be a cakewalk. It's not. None of this is going to be easy. Um, but it does look like this, this structure buckles under its own weight. Um, some of it having to do with like the effect that time has on something because people are changing. So the same things that used to work, they're not working anymore. They were able to get through because there was what looked like this overlay thing taking place. Like it was overlapping and like, we got these people and this is, is like, they're catching, they're trying to keep up with us, but there's such a quantum expansion here that this system can't take it. And it goes, it's just, he drops all of his wands and he's like, you know, it's a mess. What can I that, say, Vic? It's a mess. That, that describes, <laughs> The road to Ruta, exactly. And as a matter of fact, um, all the economic people that Biden is bringing in, that they're the same people who work for Obama. They're just shuffling a, the desks a little bit. And that what you just said makes absolute sense. For example, the Treasury Secretary is going to be a woman, Janet Yellen. I've met Janet Yellen. She is not the brightest tack in the box of tax. She, <laughs> she follows orders pretty well, but she is not the kind of person you want to to orchestrate controlling what Donald Trump was able to control and rig for four years on everybody's like, oh no, the financial system's gonna crash and blow up. And he's like, not on my watch. And and you know, I wasn't happy with what he did financially, but I, I understand that he had to do it. And now that he's gone, there's no one else to blame but the socialists that are sitting in the in the administration now, which I mean, you, you, you look back at all this and say, oh, what a perfect idea. What a perfect play. Mm -hmm. um, but, but we, I mean, this, the fall of the financial system has been baked in the cake since 1913. And people within Congress, people within the good people within the financial system, all of it has been, when are we going to, Catherine Austin Fitz calls it pushing the red button. When are mm -hmm. we going to, allow this thing to implode upon itself mm -hmm. and i think we're there is is there any way that cards can tell us how close we are to something like that to a fall mm -hmm. whatever fall you were thinking of sure let's see now immediately i get that the fall has on some level it has already occurred but that's just because you know we're drawing energies from uh, a, a source, if you will, that isn't bound to the linear, you know, time. So it's already, they're like, girl, it's done. Like it's dead in the water. Do you know what I mean? It's the yep. machine has, has long since been uh, brought down. Um, so it's just a matter of 
you know, how we walk through this here. Let's see. Give us something for the earthlings, us earthlings that are still bound by space time continuums subject to the software of aging that I'm currently learning all about. The ripe old age of 31, Bix. My bones are hurting. You're over the hill. <laughs> I'm over the hill now. That's it. That's it. All right. Wow. So we have the lovers, Gemini energy, twins. Okay. Number six. All right. So I don't know if you know this, um, but I think it was starting on the 20th um, for the next few days. What's the word called? Palindrome or something. Yep. It's when you. That's right in the, with the, the words spelled for, frontwards and backwards. Yes. That's Road Deruta. The, the guy mm -hmm. who invented that comic book was all into palindromes. No way. I swear to God. Okay. So. I just got, I got goosebumps going right now. That's, I love it because I knew nothing about, I don't even, I didn't know how to say the word because it's not anything I was ever like, ooh, palindromes, you know. <laughs> Did I even say it right? Palindromes. Pa palindrome. Palindrome. Okay. I can't even say it. palindromes. Palindromes. Palindrome. I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, so let's, <laughs> the word let's, is lost on meaning. <laughs> let's tell people it's it's a word that you spell it the same frontwards or backwards, like dad. D a d spelled backward is still d a d. But there are people who can do full sentences like that, and it's like an art for some people. Right. And my understanding too, is that it works with numbers. So it, they, they go the same, you know, if you were to mirror them, they're exactly the same. And so apparently starting from the 20th, as we've got, um, you know, January 20th, 2021. And then there's a period where all of the dates are palindromes. So- That's right. One, two, oh, wow. So, um, and you know, the lovers being uh, the card of Gemini, which is the twins, which is about the mirroring. This, there's this very interesting dynamic with the mirroring. It kind of creates a window, a very special window in time and space where honestly, I feel like t the fabric is like flexing. I, I know that sounds really weird, but you know, this is those are the energies I work with. So if you were to imagine sitting in a space and next to like your head here, imagine, you know, when somebody flexes their muscles and it just imagine air doing that, flexing. Like that's what this period of time looks like to me. Um I know what your question was, was, you know, when's it gonna, when's the whole thing gonna fall? Um, I don't know. Um, but for what is being highlighted here, okay, is this uh, period of time where the, the dates are all the same. It's like a period of palindromes and it creates almost this magical window of, of time. So my feeling on this is that and then we have our King of Wands again, which is the structure. My feeling on that, it, it could be related to the, the notion that this period of time, what happens now has, a, has a, a direct kind of like throwing effect. So what we do now, it reverberates, it echoes, it gets bigger. And so it's kind of like, it, it has this uh, magnifying effect. So there are probably things happening right now. Here's my behind the scenes card with the high priestess, the red woman. Um, you know, this is, these are the secret workings. These are like, you know, all kinds of things. My, my thought on this is that, you know, the forces of good, um, I, I don't care what anybody says. I, I feel so strongly that there are hard working men and women in government and military that know what you know, what we know, and 10,000 times more, and are doing everything that they can. Mm -hmm. And there is something about this palindrome window where the dates, 
lend themselves very well to certain, like they can seize certain grounds at this point. And it's a very delicate, very fragile space that we're in right now. Now, timelines will shift. Do you know what I mean? Like we all have a vision for a future that we want. Um, but the way that this looks is like, you know, this is why choice is so important. Maybe this is why Trump, you know, looks at us and talks about choice and, and the power of choice and free will in, in its governance of the future. Um, we're birthing it right now. And there's something very special, very fertile. You know, it is the lovers, which has a lot to do with, you know, the dark and the light and the balance of things right now. So I'd love to get, I'd love to dig into that, at, you know, more and look at, you know, paladrones and stuff. Cause that's never something that really stuck out to me. The, the guy, okay. The, the guy, I didn't know much about him until I discovered the road Ruta stuff. And the guy who produced the road to Ruta comic book for the federal reserve back in 1981 and the teacher's guide called the road to Ruta. That's where all the road to Ruta stuff comes from. Uh, he's a guy named Stephen Duvaux. Stephen Duvaux was a computer programmer in the late 60s, and then he was in military intelligence, and then he went, as a young kid, he went to the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston and ran their computer programs back in the 70s when computers were just starting up. He's, and this guy is the most patriotic person you can even imagine, and his whole thing was he wasn't supposed to be identified ever. Um, it wasn't until 19, uh, in the 1990s that he ever published anything, but he published this book on um, project management that is like the Bible of project management. Can you imagine a bigger project than managing the electronic monetary system from the early 70s on throughout till the end of time? And I, have, I discovered this guy, I don't know how it happened. I, I just did my research and there's no doubt in my mind, he was involved in writing the, the first computer programs used in our monetary system, along with Alan Greenspan. And I don't think he's in the mix anymore, but his big thing was palindromes. And I can see him, it's kind of like that movie War Games. Do you ever see that movie War Games with uh, Matthew Broderick? And it's an old movie, an old guy like me, uh, Ali Sheedy. You, you probably don't even know who these people are. But it, it was a computer that was practicing war games and it actually turned into, it was going to fire all these, all these uh, missiles. And, and they're trying to break in because they knew Ooh, the computer wow. programmer had programmed in a, a code, a back door. They just couldn't figure it out. And they finally figured it out. This is kind of what I'm feeling right now. And I'm getting the goosebumps right now from saying it. I think that Stephen Duvaux has, has programmed in some kind of, palindrome code into the financial system to so he's able to pull that plug on one of these palindrome days that's my take well that's fascinating to me and you know i feel like you and i could just like we could whip each other into a frenzy of like <laughs> ah, you know <laughs> It's like everybody else, easy. though. Everybody's got their you know, just It's crazy. Yes, yes. Everybody has something. Let me see here. Because there, there is, when I said, like, there's something about this window where the date, where something about the numbers. Like, we know that the cabal um, works. They have a different set of rules and laws and everything. And a lot of it is based on numerology and symbolism and things the like banking, that. This is not just, you know, yeah. trendy. The banking system. I remember Christine Lagarde, the head of the IMF, coming out and giving a, a talk on numerology. And everyone's like, mm -hmm. fuck. And that's, I mean, they, yeah. they dabble in the occult and all that. And that, that's like above the people above the banking system. So I hadn't thought of the the palindromes as far as the number type palindromes, but for the road to Ruta, holy shit, I'm going to be, I'll, I'll be searching every day for the next two months for the most likely days will probably be those palindrome days. You know, it feels like there's a kind of, 
hold on Our connections crappy. Just, yeah i want to wait till my bars are not red anymore i can hear you always Once I've got while, we'll something. gosh that's the worst it's so embarrassing <laughs> yeah only when you get like a funny face when it freezes <laughs> which is always good it's good for marketing <laughs> Yeah, I bet. Oh my gosh. Let me see. It feels there's the fool. Okay, Aries energy. Um, you know, the start kind of like we're just jumping off into completely uncharted territory here. It requires a lot of, I hate the word trust, but we're going to use the word trust. But when I think about what those dates have, the palindrome dates what they are, the dynamic that they cause, that they affect in the way that those, the powers that be or the cabal, the way that they conduct business. They really hope that we don't understand the gravity of that. And it's almost like they, they hope that we don't look to the right and see that there's a big window open where holy crap they can do whatever they want but don't tell them that don't let it right yeah. and there's almost what i saw was like a um the calendar uh opens up and it's like there's this big but there it's bottomless like the bottom's out and it's it's not that it, it doesn't fall into a pit. There's like a levitating process. Everything is being levitated because there's a big swirling like opening is what it looks like. I know that sounds very strange, but um, what it's doing is we're kind of just floating along. But if people were to take rooted strategic action during this window, it has such an effect. And I said, it has like a throwing effect mm -hmm. where we're like throwing the intention with this one action out three years, four years, five years. So there's something, there's something about it. And I don't know how many people know about it or well, I, if I the just right did, people. I just did the, the days in my head. I know when they are. We're at the one, two portion. So here at January is the one, two is for 20. So right, right now it's the 21st. Today's a palindrome right. day because you got one, two, two, one, one, right. two, wait, one, two, 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 one on the 22nd, one, two, two, wait, one, two, 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 one. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the 22nd is a palindrome day. And then the 23rd is mm -hmm. one, two, three, Two one and backwards it's one two three two one, and then twenty right. fourth one two four two one one two four two one, those are palindrome mm -hmm. days. Oh, this is cool. So there, it goes yeah, all the way. Some... It would go all the way to the 29th. One, two, nine, two, one, one, two, nine, two, one. So it basically it would be from tomorrow until the 29th of February. Wow. I haven't done like, I mean, the 29th of January. Okay, okay, January, January. But, I was gonna wait a second. <laughs> I know, but there's palindrome days in February too. For example, it'd be, oh no, it won't be because it has to start with one because it's the year, year 2021 because it would have to end with a one. So it's we're this is the only week of palindromes. Mm, mm. There's something about that that lays this. I shouldn't even say lays the groundwork because when I see it, there's no ground to it. It's like an open space. Let me see. What is the significance of this time? I love figures stuff out as we go <laughs> that's the best for sure no I, I like it too i was that was the first thing i got because the um oh there she is there's the star <laughs> my favorite there card. is my star the it's the best card and my question was what is the significance of this time 
um, this, this gap that we were just talking about. You know, the past day has felt like a week and it's taken the wind out of so many sails, but we're not done, clearly. Um, palindromes. I'm going to have to look into that. Gosh, I'm so sorry. No, it's all right. Okay. See, because my, my connection was really bad um, and then it hit. And so then the notifications come in. It's funny. So my phone is, is balanced up against a huge piece of fluorite right now. I don't know if I've shown you, but this thing is. Oh, yeah. You oh, should. I'm frozen. <laughs> That's a big one. It weighs like 20 pounds or something like that. It's really heavy. So, but I think it does actually does something for like the phone like the crystal, I don't know, we'll see. But um, so we do have the star that, you know, is to mark the significance of this very special period, which is so appropriate. I can't even believe it. Let's just take a moment and talk about the fact that, you know, this is part of the plan. This yep. is a, a kind of signal or emission um, that the human race is is putting out there right now that we are in a period of quantum development. It's like we condense so much growth and change into a short period of time that otherwise would have been distributed over the course of decades, maybe in hundreds of years. So here we are. You know, I know your original question was like, when is it going to happen? You know, I don't happening. know. I think it's happening. I think it's we're happening. We're the, in um, it. the star card, the first time I studied it and understood it, I was doing an analysis of the uh, Economist magazine cover. Right. The very last card is the star card. And it's tilted a little Forward. bit to the right. Exactly. Right. Yep. Huh. I wonder. Because it, it it's the only time right now where because the way that i work and I, it happened with the january 11th date which did prove to be significant because some very important executive orders were realized that day and all kinds of stuff came out on the 11th um, of which i think we're still we haven't seen you know the full effects of it so much we haven't seen um, but on the calendar this period of time looks it's almost like it's undefined. Do you know what I mean? It's undefined. And so that, where January 11th glowed. It would make sense mm -hmm. as far as if we are under military control and we have a fake administration in there, nobody really knows what the hell's going on. Mm. I want to ask the cards just really quick. Are we under, you guys, <laughs> guys <laughs> we're, we're having a we're having a talk i want to know if we are under genuine military control at this time and we truly as a nation under military control the fool zero so this is zero is my connection okay yeah yeah i was just I'm like so does that mean no okay. like there's no control maybe the fool the fool is a yes the fool is a yes because it's number zero but it's always like expect the unexpected and like the impossible realized because this is the taking a step off into a direction that is completely uncharted and new. We have never, I shouldn't say we have never been under military control, but we have certainly never been at this impasse as a country. We have never been where we are before. And that's what this is. There is nothing about this time that, well, I shouldn't say there's nothing about it because everything goes in cycles, but this is all new. This is a completely we're like, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, oh, there was something I was that was coming to me. You brought something. You mentioned something, and I wanted to go back. Oh, it'll come back. <laughs> Always does. Yeah, it'll come back. It'll come back. I do like the fool energy, though, 
because it really it kind of it's a blank slate in a lot of ways and it 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 allows for people to start to fill in the blanks but this is why it's so important that people make good decisions right now mm -hmm. is people are going to fall into traps at this time that will then affect their future forever mm -hmm. so what happens this week there's something very special about this week um you know that's the oh, coming palette you know and i'm telling you that was never something i i cared about and then like the other day i just saw something on youtube um about you know words that are the same backwards and forwards and i saw the word and it stuck out to me and then i pulled that card um the the lovers and which is traditionally this is the twin energy the mirror and that's what i thought of and then i remembered oh yeah the 20th like that's right someone just said paladrones that starts on the day of the inauguration i'm like go figure you um you had said in our last reading yeah the 20th is kind of it's the start of everything but it's like the 28th and 29th that something big mm -hmm. happens mm -hmm. or i think we're talking about silver and the and mm -hmm. the children and it's got to happen at the same time type of thing um yes. cliff high sees something and has seen something for 10 years that happens about the 28th or 29th and it has to do with um citizens going into this building and discovering documents right outside of washington dc and like they're on the run type of thing and and it, it's under secrets revealed i mean if you get something like that happens with the revealing of either monetary secrets or the pedophilia ring secrets or whatever it is i always thought it was the smithsonian secrets so i something i feel is coming around that time well i'll tell you we're definitely i just pulled some cards to clarify i haven't heard that you know cliff's exact um uh, prediction or insight on that but i did want to shed some you know get some clar clarity on it um I, I love cliff i really do the man changed the game you know um there is something so there are people right now that are so uh like it's do or die like it's now or never and they are like they feel it like it's like the spirit of paul revere times a thousand okay um so some people this has affected and it has taken them out they're falling on their swords and they are saying i'm done leave me out of this i don't believe in it anymore i quit other people are taking it to another extreme and i think that that extreme is so necessary right now. Now I do have the six of pentacles and the hangman reversed. I don't often get reversals. I, I actually um, adjust my cards, like I fix my cards every day so that they're all upright. I don't usually work with reversals. So when they do come up, <laughs> I pay attention. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Cause I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, but the hanged man, when the hanged man reverses, this is what happens when a period of inaction is it's like okay the gears start moving again it's like when something's been shut down and then someone comes in and they're like got it you know and then the system starts to work again um and so my feeling on this you know i there is a lot of um do it you know like you can do it you know do it now like there's there's rage there's a little bit of panic there's adrenaline and it's like go 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 type of thing it doesn't feel uh uh in my body because that's like where i get a lot of my my uh, hits is like i pay attention to what's going on in my body it doesn't feel exclusively military but what i think that is the the, the difference i want to paint here is that it could be um military related former military or some kind of like paramilitary people that are trained but not necessarily active duty active duty is its very own thing in clips they, clips wasn't military it was it was um it was the people the people okay. charge into this building for some reason i think he said they were running away from 
something outside of DC and a bunch of people, a nondescript building and find all these files and show them to the, the world. And that changes everything from then on. Well, look what we have. We have the tower. Okay. Now the tower is the, um, the card that brings the shocking revelation. Okay. This is the shocking revelation card. It's the solar plexus chakra. This is an illuminating card. And sometimes it's excruciating because so often when we are made aware of a truth, you know, if it's a horrible truth, it hits us hard. If it's a necessary truth, it hits us hard. If it's good news, it's good news. And it, you know, it hits us hard. Um, but this with the hangs man reverse. Now the hangs man, again, it's a very visceral card. I'm just going to show everybody. This is the flayed man. You know, um, this is something that was kept in limbo. Okay. Traditionally, when the card is upright, it is a very uh, difficult period of inaction and limbo. Things are kept, things are held down, you know, no movement, no activity, no action. Um, it looks to me like something motivates this, like there is a monetary motivation of some kind, but that's not necessarily that these people were paid to do it. But I, I, I look around and I'm, I see people are either now heavily motivated to do something because they feel like they've been thrown to the wolves. Oftentimes, things like this breed necessity. Maybe if Trump had been sworn in, we would sit on our hands a little longer. Mm -hmm. uh, but th what this does is this provides a true sense of uh, uh, things are dire. Things are more dire than they have been. And even if they're actually not, and that sense is kind of just being given to us, you know, for show or optics or whatever, the feeling is there. The feeling of suddenly being uh, unsafe, more un more unsafe than we have been for four years. This has a very real effect on people, and we are going to see people do things that we didn't think that they were capable of, good things and bad things. Um, all new, uncharted territory here. Ooh. That's the palindrome week. <laughs> Woo! Now, I guess it would be ten days. Wait, wait, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Yeah, so today, the 21st is a palindrome day. And mm -hmm. so was yesterday. Mm. Mm. So for the next 10 days, that uh, wait, yeah, it's 10 days of darkness, 10 days of palindrome. I really think that there's real validity to the whole 10 days of darkness thing because I, I, I consider myself, you know, I have support, you know, I have people... Um, I could even, you know, reach out to you and all you have to do is give me like two or three words and I'm like, okay, okay. You know what I mean? So we have a network, but a lot of people don't. And there's what, how many voted for Trump? 74 million that we know of? That's yeah. 74 million people thinking, feeling the same kind of things that we felt yesterday. That's Ooh. a, that's a big hole. It is a big hole. And, you know, if, if, <sighs> The other side is really, they're really showing their colors right now, um, rubbing our faces in it and just the smugness and the mocking uh, behavior. It's all very, it has to me a very purging effect. And, and you really start to see what comes out of people um, when they feel that they have won and when they feel that now they are even more justified in being ugly and saying, you know, harmful things and cheering on socialism. <laughs> Who freaking knew? And they, um, just look at the, the guards around the Capitol. What, 30, 40,000? Not one instance of a patriot charging the gates. No. Whereas no. All, you, all you do with the, the liberals is, you know, say you know, hurt their feelings and they're rioting. Mm, exactly. They're breaking their own stuff. They're destroying their own neighborhoods. Yeah. It's very, very unfortunate. Or they're being bused to other neighborhoods to destroy other people's neighborhoods. Um, so, but one thing I, I just wanted to say really quick, because when you mentioned that there was a building and people were going to be gaining entry, I don't know exactly how Italy is doing right now, 
but a repetitive theme that I've seen um, and that other people uh, have, have been shown psychically uh, is the Vatican. I and I, did you think it already happened? I, I've already heard happened. that there was yeah. some things took place. Um, what I was shown had more to do with the people of Rome, uh, the people in the surrounding area that took it upon themselves to move into the Vatican. And then at that point, things were physically revealed, physically brought up from out, you know, out from b- beneath, because as mm-hmm. you know, it goes down um so sticky so gross do you know what I mean like I used to go there a lot as I went to school in Rome and I'll tell you the place is dark and there's no natural light it's like that place is only lit by you know candles and lamps and stuff at nighttime because even in the middle of the day there's only a few holes in the top um, of the you know they call the Sistine Chapel there's light that comes in from the top, but at night, it, it's just a very eerie, um, dark, heavy place. Mm-hmm. And you could feel like, it's almost like, you know, it, you try to imagine like a third grade or fourth grade class and we got, all have our little sneakers on and, you know, looking around, I'm pretending to give a crap because it's all ugly to me. Honestly, very ugly, gaudy, overdone, nothing I don't like any of that but I just kept my mouth shut but it's like the floor would vibrate it's like there's something that literally wants to come up out of the floor and it's kind of like when there's something on like a device is on or television is on if you were to touch it you can feel a buzz Um, or if you were if you're sensitive enough and you touch a tree you can feel a buzz but there's something underneath the Vatican that wants to just bubble up. And I think the best thing that could possibly happen is that it be revealed. I, I think it was. Um, well, I, I was reading that that pyramid code stuff that came out recently talks about the, I and mean, I think you talked about it too, um, the creature at the underneath the Vatican, uh, where mm. they um, bath, bath. It was, re- ba- I don't, um, Beelzebub. Balthazar, Beezlebub, one of those. One of those, yeah. No, it's one of those dudes that just thinks he's really special, and yeah. there are enough human beings on the planet that are corrupted by this energy that give it what it needs yeah. to to be powerful here. Um, but I, um, that was remote viewed by a woman in Australia. Okay. A very well-known viewer. Um, so that I was getting that from her. And then also clients that I was speaking to were telling me that they were getting this. And a lot of it had to do with the lion. You know, the um, people think of Trump. Some people think of Trump <clears throat> and they see the lion energy, the cat energy, the big cat energy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we've got to just really stay, choose to stay positive. I can't. I can't believe for a moment that this is over. (coughs) I just don't. No, it's, it's not. And, and I mean, that's one of the things I've been saying for the last 24 hours on my channel, at least this is just another setback. You know, I've been through so many setbacks in the battle with silver. You you feel it when it happens. It's like, it's to your core, but then you you get up, you get off the ground, you keep fighting. And it's the only way to move forward is just to keep fighting for what you think is right and stick to your principles and expose you're gonna win ultimately you're gonna win the good always beats the bad and always will ultimately and if it's if it's not in our lifetimes we can do as much work as possible to help our children fight this fight and everything counts these days especially right now yep this week um something about the way the fabric is looking, you know, and it's obviously not with my eyeballs, but with my other eye, um, it has this like, it's like it's breathing, it's flexing and there's, but there's a hole, there's no bottom. Instead, it's like everything is kind of being floated 
So, you know, if people were to know that, or if that were to be explained uh, to certain, you know, the right people at this time, that what they do now holds almost, it's like, okay, you do this much, but really it's going to be amplified. So if, you know, bold, so I've, I feel like I have to be very careful with what I say because I don't want the feds to come to my house. But I mean, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen, you know, <laughs> whatever. I, I haven't done anything illegal, at least not, you know, to the based on the Constitution that I uh, follow, you know, the one that I'm familiar with. Um, a lot of people are saying that the United States Incorporated has been dismantled and that, you know, we're in this very strange space right now, which would explain a lot um, where we're passing with this, tra- it's a transition. So we're moving from the incorporated to, you know, the, the original constitutional Republic. Um, we'll see, we're gonna, we're gonna see. My cards say yes. My cards, you know, they, they, they pull no punches. Like they're very brutal and they have been very brutal because they're reflecting the disappointment and devastation of millions of people right now. Um, but this was always, you know, the price that we had to pay. It can't all be glory and, and rainbows. Wishes time. and rainbows. Where's my comic book? The very back <laughs> of my comic book. Rainbow. I got to show you this. Well, there's a rainbow right behind you. A beautiful I, one. That's on purpose. Of course it is. So, and, and I'm, yeah, I'm absolutely... Still, you know, I, I've been screaming about there's good guys working on this for 13, 14 years now. So obviously there's Ruta and the rainbow. It's all good. This is the Fed comic book. But the very last page is this. Let me um, let me read this to you. Yeah. So this would be this would be the victory time. Okay. It says, but the townspeople are still not content. Many want two or three or four flowers. They, they trade colored flowers like a, a asset-backed money type of thing, gold money and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, many want two, three, or even four flowers of their own. Since Ruta cannot grow that many in only two sunlit caves, she and Rocky still search for another opening to color land. And this is the cool part. So don't be surprised if some summer day when you're lying in the green, green grass and looking at the blue sky, you hear voices coming from underground. It could be Rocky and Ruta searching for the entrance to Colorland. Colorland is the gold standard. And the, I mean, look at them. Look at look at this. Is our future? Our future mm-hmm. is not the deep state darkness. It's not the people who have controlled us all our lives. It is wishes and rainbows. We are going to hit that rainbow, that rainbow, mm-hmm. and Ruta in the very end. Ruta's still looking for color then, still looking for a way back to a gold standard, looking to kick out the, the criminals that have controlled us for so long. And we're there. Is that why they're black and white? What? Is that why they're black and white? Well, the, um, the comic book is all about scarcity. So Ruta grows up in a land of no color. And mm-hmm. when she finds color, she wants to give it to all the people of the land. But because she only had a couple colored flowers she can only give a cup it's all about a monetary system scarcity mm-hmm. in in our money and things like that it's really cool once you it. once you analyze it for 13 years it becomes very cool <laughs> oh my gosh that is amazing it all makes so much sense and it's interesting that you mentioned like the opening to color land that, that that's a whole thing because the way that this time period looks to me, and I talk about how there's no bottom to it, where other periods of time there are, it's like it's more structured, but there are, um, I, I don't know if it has to do with where we're sitting astrologically or, you know, the effects of celestial bodies on the fabric here, maybe what Saturn is doing. Saturn has a huge effect on our time and our rules and karma and things like that it appears that there is, um, there's, an, there's an opening, but there's a great campaign to distract us from the fact that there is an opening. And they're like, look over here. Mm-hmm. While all of this 
you know, this ground is very soft here. Do you know what I mean? And there's, there's spaces. And so, but they, they are, they are trying to create a distance between, um, you know, the human psyche and, and the understanding of all of this. So this is why, you know, they, they just the crap, the fake news, it's all black magic. It's the worst kind of magic. And I really, I'm, I can't wait until people see that. They're going to have to one way or another. We're too deep now. And I'm not going down with these people. Do you know what I mean? I'm I'm not letting them drag me and my bloodline down. I agree. I agree. Are, is, is there anything else that, that I, I need to talk to you about other things, but uh, anything else? Because I, I want to give this out, uh, not on the private road, but out to the, the whole world. I think it's so important what we talk about and, and to give people a little glimpse of of what we are seeing, which is not a dark future. It's a very light future. It's just going to be some tough times getting through and, and they're necessary. Yeah. So let's give everybody, let's give everybody a card um, for the future. Okay. I think that's, that's fair. What do the people need to know? at this time about our collective future. Joe Biden is the president of nothing. <laughs> Joe Biden is the president of nothing. You trying to influence the cards right now? <laughs> no, I'm just, you know, <laughs> I think it's a fact. I think I'm stating a fact. He was sworn in, and I know I said this in our last session, I said, you were like, so is it a yes or a no? And I was like, I mean, I think he's gonna get sworn in, but it's not gonna be real. Yeah. It's like, yeah, like they're gonna show us and he's gonna, they're gonna call him president. They've been calling him president elect for months. Did you, did you, you didn't see the, when he got sworn in, did you? No, I've seen pictures. I know the, the Bible was the, say, is the inverted cross. Kamala wouldn't even touch it. Me, it's, it's not that. To me, he got sworn in at 11.55, five minutes early. Trump so was still president when Joe Biden got sworn in. Oh, my God. What? He got sworn in five minutes early. Five, five. Q says five, five a lot. Okay. I think that there's something to it. Well, I know I, people don't want to hear about Q anymore, but I don't care. I'm still a Q girl, a Q tard. Call me whatever you want. He I love the Q. good guys. To me, I've been talking about the good guys. I mean, that comic book was written by the good guys. So good I got no uh, You know, I'm never going to not be on the good guys team. So let's see. What does everybody need to know? Specifically, um, fixes people, everybody that will come into this information, people that are going to watch this video, what do they need to know about the future, our near future, our collective future. This is the one. Page of Pentacles. Page of Pentacles. So this is going to be baby steps. This is going to be one day at a time. You know, traditionally, this is the card of like bread crumbing. Did we talk about that? We talked about last bread week, crumbing yeah. last week. This came up. Um, you know, I think that because everything seems to have been stripped away, some people anticipate, feel that we've been stripped of things. Things are going to get to a very basic you know, we're suddenly going to be really grateful for things because we're like, oh God, you know, like, <laughs> so it's kind of like a um, get back to basics, like assess your, your physical surroundings, take a look at what you have done and what you haven't yet done and, and look at what is in your control. This is a very, um, uh, uh, this is a card of what you can touch. This is a card of what is, you know, what's evident, even if that's just little bits and pieces of information, it's okay to not have the whole picture right now. You're one person, I'm one person. And even as networked as we are, we still, you know, it's okay that this period right now feels like we are taking things day by day by day. That's all right. Um, I hope that I really hope that that helps everybody. I hope this whole thing helps everyone. It helps me to help everybody else. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it, I know it does. 
Um, and and I want everybody to, by the way, thank you for all your work on the Road to Rodeo. Oh my God, if, if anybody's interested in the whole Jimmy Moonstone series, go to roadtorodeo.com. Uh, that's on the private road, but I'm putting this out for the whole world. It's too important to, to just have for the private road subscribers. So if you guys want a reading with Jenny, she's available for readings. Go to jennymoonstone.com. She's got a calendar that works these days, I believe, and yeah. you can sign up for a reading. And um, I obviously I'm five thumbs up, but everybody that I've known who's from the road to Ruta who's gotten a reading is also five thumbs up and even more. So Jenny, thank you so much. And um, I don't even know what to say other than the future looks bright. It, as long mm -hmm. as we can look far enough out and do our part, mm -hmm. the future looks bright. And be tough. Thank you, Bex. All right. We'll talk to you later. Okay.